Greetings friends, Daniel Vallis here. We're trying something new. A very informal kitchen table talk. We're just going to share a few things about the timeline that I hope you are reviewing every day to remind yourself of all the incredible signs that are coming together this week. We do not know the day or hour, but we do know what Christ told us to watch for. And many of us instructions regarding looking up and lifting up our heads. We do know that. So, especially because we know that our redemption, which is the pickup of a purchased possession, is very nigh. We see so many things coming together. So, I'll make another post about the upcoming celestial events in Gemini, but right now we certainly see so many reminders just of shining bright. When we look up and consider God's celestial clock, the time tells us to shine bright. The time tells us that alone. And, of course, we see so many things in the world around us, too, reminding us that that we are quickly approaching the threshold of the dog days of summer, when summer is definitely here, after we have just shortly passed the summer solstice, an astronomical marker associated with the summer, too. So we're in a, a summer time, definitely the general beginning of summer. It's not the hottest time of summer yet. We're not deep into summer yet. We're still at the beginning, relatively, of summer, particularly from an Israeli-Jerusalem perspective. This general summer time was used by Christ in likeness to the arrival and destination that signs pointed to, that his arrival would likewise be pointed to by signs. So when we see the signs pointing to an arrival and leading us to a point, and then seeing how it lines up with summer time too, it definitely rings some bells and definitely causes us to look up even more at the celestial signs that are going on right now, which remind us to shine bright and everything else. It has caught my attention, though, that the peace and safety talk that we've been hearing in the news ramped up over the past few weeks, the talk of the deal of the century has really been muted lately. Have you noticed that? But rhetoric of war and Iran has also flooded the news, too. So there's talk of more of the safety and security, but we can also definitely see more how sudden destruction can quickly... Things can really hit the fan real quick, and we can see... That the world geopolitically, there is a tender box, so to speak, that's just waiting to be burst into flames. But we've seen specifically the talk of peace and safety, that specific combination really die down. But that reminds us of what the passage says, uh, what the Bible says about in 1 Thessalonians 5.3. For when they shall say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them. So first there's the talky talk, then the sudden destruction. You're going to hear, the world is going to hear something said. Peace and safety, an emphasis on that. That's going to catch the world's attention. And then, separately, but very closely, it's going to be the sudden destruction. And considering all the blather that we've seen in the news over the past two months, and it's even more months than that, really the past year, We've really seen it going off the charts, specifically because it involves the talks with North Korea, two very historic talks at the same time as the historic talks in Israel, Middle East area, or at least talk about a plan. Not a lot of talk about it, but, but we've seen so much in the news about it leading up to this point, and then for it to suddenly kind of go quiet, it actually makes a deafening silence that is noticeable. Now, is this what Scripture is talking about, that the talk would be distinctly noticed and the sun destruction is distinctly following, but not leading directly into? In other words, the talk of peace and safety goes on and then stops. And then, sun destruction comes. It appears to be, could be, considering that apparently the deal of the century won't be getting much discussion until after the Israeli elections anyway, we should soberly consider that we may have just passed the apex of this summer's peace and safety warnings. Very sobering to consider what is coming next after the then, after you have heard the calls. When we look on the timeline, we are reminded that we are in a month tied to the meaning and reminder of hearing. Now is when we must be rehearsing, reviewing, and searching scripture for what Christ wants us to hear and do. Not just hear it, not be like someone who looks at their face in a mirror and then goes away. No, someone actually hears and acts on what they've heard. They obey, especially when we know that he is literally at the door about to turn the doorknob. That's what all these pictures about this summer, the sign pointing to summer, 
this time, all the celestial signs about shining bright. So many things telling us he is at the door, about the to tour. Turn the doorknob. Are we listening? Are we double checking that we are doing what he wants us to be doing and how he wants to find us when he opens that door? That's what we need to be. Make sure we are hearing properly at this time. In our previous post, we remarked how the Julian calendar commemoration of Paul's martyrdom will correlate to July 12th. The Gregorian date was June 29th, 30th, depending on which group you're in. Some follow one calendar, others observed more historic Julian calendar date of that historic event. Just the day, more properly, when his bones were interred, that's the only date that we have a specific date and historic marker for, but that was also chosen to commemorate his martyrdom because that's the only time that they had historically. So that's what we're looking at it as, not which groups are observing it, but just singularly the interning of his bones and that historic time marker to commemorate his death, because that's the closest thing we have to mark his death. So we saw that just a few days ago, but then also just in a few days ahead, July 12th, another significant date marker that goes with that same event too. So we're in a zone right here, right at the beginning of summer, right before the dog days of summer too, a time that highlights Paul's death and how he wrote before his death that he was pressing for the prize. He was running the, his race he had finished. All those reminders, he was summarizing his life, summarizing his race when he knew he was about to die. And so we're at a time that reminds us of his death and should cause us to reflect on what he was doing and what he wrote about shortly before his death. Running for the prize. There's so many reminders that are taking place just this week, right here where we are right now. This week. Has not our Lord been emphasizing these same reminders, instructions, encouragements over the past year for us? With these resources that he has given to finish our race, to press for the prize? That's the theme that we've seen and watched on this learning journey. The Lord has emphasized and really pressed, run for the prize. Finish strong. That's, if you have not noticed anything else, that, that's the whole reason why we're still here. Now, why Christ hasn't taken us to heaven as soon as we get saved. He lays us here for a purpose to accomplish, as his servants, different tasks in his vineyard. He has a race for us to run. He wants us to press for the prize. To see, are we really going to run for him? To run and press for the prize? You know, this whole concept of running for the prize, pressing for the prize, was written expressly by Paul, knowing he was about to be executed, that his race was about to finish. So, friend, what about us? Are we reflecting on our race and how we are running right now? Are we thinking about it? Are we adjusting our stride to be more zealous, to be more fervent, to be on fire for our Lord, for our Redeemer, to be hot for Him, to be shining bright for the prize? our Redeemer and our Beloved. I hope and pray so. On the timeline, we see two important reminders in just a few days ahead that shouldn't surprise us that they go with the theme of what God is emphasizing and drawing our attention to. The traditional date for Elijah being caught up in the whirlwind, hello, would be July 13th, 14th, which is the 10th day of the 5th month. And this is what we are expecting, to be caught up in the clouds, just like Elijah and just like Christ. It also reminds us that when we rehearse the story, Elijah knew his time was running short. He knew he was about to be caught up into the clouds. He knew that. And he knew his race was about to be called. So he didn't just sit on the side of the road or sit on the couch and wait for it to happen. No, he went around encouraging others. He finished strong. He encouraged Elisha. He encouraged the sons of the prophets. He finished strong, staying busy, occupying till the very moment he left. He lived in light of his race and the race of others. Powerful reminder right now. On July 12th, 13th, we see the 9th of Av, when the people of Israel chose to believe a false report of the ten spies, instead of believing God's promises, instead of hearing what he had to say and you know, acting on it. They didn't go forward in faith to claim the prize that God wanted to give them. They lost an incredible promise and prize that God wanted to give them because they did not, they didn't want it. They didn't believe that he wanted to give it to them. All they had to do was go forward in action, believing him. Go forward in faith. They didn't want to do that. 
They would rather believe lies. They did not want to hear. And they definitely did not want to obey. And so they lost. They lost the prize that God wanted to give them. Are we pressing for the prize? We know the prize is Christ. Are we pressing for that prize? So many Christians will lose the prize. They're going to lose rewards. They're going to lose crowns. They're going to lose privileges. They're going to lose access to Christ. They're going to lose fellowship with Christ, even in eternity in heaven, yes. They're going to lose rewards, which include access and privilege. Those are the very pictures that he paints in the letters to the seven churches. Pictures of fellowship and access and privilege. Christians will lose that because they do not believe God's promises. They do not live in light of his instructions. They do not have an ear to hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. They think it's optional, but it's not optional. It's part of our race. So what about us? Are we listening? Are we obeying? Are we going forward with what he wants us to do? Friend, we are in a month whose name has the same root as hearing. Hello? Take time. Make, make time to review page by page these resources to double check that you are hearing, considering, and taking action on what Christ said and what he emphasized we should listen and take heed to. Specifically, read a resource running for the prize. Print it out, definitely, so you can read it especially at this commemorative time of Paul's martyrdom when he was talking about this very subject, running for the prize. You know, a few days ago I made a point to go sit out on the porch and read the entire book. Yes, I read our own books. The Lord, Lord wrote them. I'm just, I'm just the typist. I just lay it out. So I read, I read these resources too. I review them more than once, many times, because it's for me too. It's for all of us. We all need to hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And I read through it page by page, every single page. I wanted to make sure I reviewed all the instructions that we've been rehearsing that the Lord has shown us on this learning journey. You know, there were parts, many parts of it, that I just read out loud because it forced me to think about what I was reading, to think about the subject that was being discussed and rehearsed, the instructions, to meditate and chew on it. This is what we need to do right now. Hear it, review it, and do it. We have been foretold so many things. We've been specifically foretold. We must press for the prize. The prize is not given. It is earned. We must press for the prize. Salvation is by grace alone. It's a gift. But all the rewards are by merit. They are earned. Let us finish strong and faithful. Let's be wise. Let's hear what our Savior, who has already saved us, when we put our faith and trust in Him, Let's see what he wants to give us with privilege, access, and fellowship. And let's press for him to be close to him for all of eternity. Also make sure you review the resource when to watch. Review Christ's strong warnings about the days of Noah and Lot. How the end times will be worse than the flood. He specifically said that. His warnings are given to his disciples so that we will live in light of the warnings. So we don't take it flippantly. His warnings are for specifically the disciples, those who have at least read it. It's for them and it's for us to listen and take heed that in light of the warnings, we should pray and we should live to be found worthy to escape all those things that are coming. That's why he tells us what's coming. So we will live like we believe what he said and we will have an ear to hear what the Spirit says in the churches that he wants us to do. So we'll be found worthy. So we'll be found wise. So we'll be found faithful. Those are the two things he's checking. Are you wise? Are you acting wisely, listening, and obeying? And are you faithful? Doing what you're supposed to be doing. Doesn't mean you're perfect. It just means you're faithful. You are doing and trying to apply yourself to what our master wants you to do. Those are the examples he gives of all the servants. And you will see that in the running for the prize. That's what he emphasizes. Be found doing what you're supposed to be doing. Now is the time when we need to review all this. Are we reading? Are we heeding? Now, friend, we don't know the specific day or hour of his return, but he gave us plenty of instructions, plenty of illustrations, plenty of examples and signs so we would know the time and so that we would watch with our life, not just with our eyes or just with our head knowledge. No, watch with your life. Live as though you know he's about to come. He is looking for faith in action. Wise servants, faithful servants, 
and those that be wise, they are living wise. That's why they are being wise. Those that be wise shall shine as the stars forever and ever. Our life and how we live now is a demonstration of how much we love Him. What does He see of our love for Him? Friend, the hour is late, and we've heard so many trumpet calls. We've heard, we've heard so many signs, we can't even review them all. The timeline just gives us a small glimpse. Even when you look on the timeline multi-page, just look back at it. There are so many things that tell us, you should be watching right now. You should be listening. You should be heeding. All these things have been saying one single message. The bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. That's the message of all these signs. He's coming. You get up. Go out to meet him. That's what we're supposed to do. Are we listening? Are we hearing those trumpet calls that say, get up and go out to meet him? Are we listening to the trumpet calls that say, he's coming? Live like it. Live like it. Are we obeying? Are we going forward, drawing nigh to him, the bridegroom? Are we pressing toward the one who loves us? Our beloved, let us pray and let us seek his face for strength, for wisdom, for boldness, for love and instruction on the steps that we need to take to hear and to heed and obey our blessed Savior's voice and words. Let us rise up. Let us cast off what keeps us from shining bright, from running strong, from finishing strong. Let us fix our gaze entirely upon his face, the face of Jesus Christ, the prize, the one who is our Redeemer and Beloved. When we set our heart and affection entirely on Him, our hands and our feet will naturally follow and we will run toward the one we love. Are we listening? Are we setting our affections and desires and our gaze entirely upon Him? Are we pressing toward the prize? In order to press for the prize, we have to be looking at the prize and running toward Him, which means we have to get our focus off of everything else and set our eyes on the prize and press only toward the prize. Let us be found wise. Let us be found faithful. Let us be found loving Him and hearing Him and serving Him first and highest above all else. Maranatha.